Good morning or afternoon to everyone in attendance. Uh, bear with me as I share my screen and present today's slide deck. Thank you, Steph. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello there. Hello. Let's see, a request to please enable captions. Let's see, um, Steph, do you have permissions to uh your permissions to enable captions on here sure. um let me just find that oh. Oh. bear with me please also i see louis has joined welcome yeah thank you My apologies, but do you know how to locate the captions option? Video settings, maybe? Um, I'm looking for the captions option to display cap caption while we're presenting. Right, maybe in video settings. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, under accessibility, I would, uh, I think, closed captioning will look like this, yeah. Um, but, um, Tracy. Well, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Unama. I'm so sorry. I just see someone I haven't seen in ages. Tracy, it's so wonderful to see you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, oh, good to oh, see you. There's two you. Tracys. There's two Tracys. <laughs> yeah. right. okay. As we go uh, ahead, go Unama. Ahead sorry. No worries. Uh, I'm still admitting some more folks into the call. Um, but as we uh, get started and figure out our technical difficulties, uh, go ahead and just drop your name um, uh, and where you're signing in from in the chat. Um, feel free to also include any pronouns uh, as, as you identify um, and any organization you're affiliated with. Bear with me, please. I should be able to find this momentarily. Wish there was a search function where I can just type in captions, take me to what I'm looking for. Welcome, welcome. We saw some more folks joining into the room. While you all are introducing yourselves and we are getting situated here, I do just want to announce that we will be holding a raffle drawing at the end of this call. So please, uh, you do need to be present to win. Please do stay on the call um, and we will be giving away enrollments into our Lyft ACP training product. So this is um, for training for trainers, uh, which will get um, you situated and um, set up for becoming a an ACP affordable connectivity program enrollment specialist. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sky. Mm -hmm. And thanks everyone for their patience. Your patience. Uh, the captions should now be available. Perfect. Um, and with that said, let's see more folks in the room. 
All right, I'll go ahead and launch in. Um, Seth, you want to manage um, any more admits um, during the presentation? Thank you. All right. Um, for those who are just recently joining, uh, feel free to drop your name, pronouns, and if you'd like to share um, and any organization you're affiliated with and where you're signing in from. All right. uh, with that said, I'll go ahead and uh, begin. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Unama Dawin. I'm the Digital Equity Policy and Program Manager here at the Community Tech Network. Uh, and I'm excited for us to, um, this Digital Inclusion Week and CTN Social Equity Day uh, to kick off this conversation on advocating for the Affordable Connectivity Program. Uh, and on to the next slide. Uh, so just as um, housekeeping and uh, overview of what we're uh, talking about uh, for this panel session today, uh, going to go over uh, captions are not showing up. Well, I'll continue as we work through um, providing captions. Um, and if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, so we're going to go over um, the central core of digital literacy, um, then talking about what the ACP is um, for those who may be less familiar or just as a refresher. Um, then going to discuss how um, to enroll in the ACP, uh, drawing on some <laughs> Uh, lifts um, expertise uh, there. Uh, and after that, we'll enter some conversations on ACP recipient stories and discussing the impacts of uh, ACP on those who have benefited. Uh, and then we'll uh, enter a conversation on um, what's at risk with uh, the ACP um, and its potential loss, uh, and then how we may uh, advocate to continue uh, the ACP in the future and continue its impact. Uh, and towards the end, we'll also discuss uh, sharing out communications to promote ACP advocacy related messaging. Uh, and then we'll wrap up um, with the um, with everyone still on the call for um, being included in the raffle. Um, so with that said, um, am I missing anything, Sky, Seth? Great, all right, so we'll launch into I just want to check and learn if everyone, everyone's able to see the captions because they are enabled. I'm trying to look at it as well from the back end. So we'll hopefully have an update in about two minutes. Thank you. Great. All right. So I'll continue and hopefully everyone will be able to see the captions. All right. So we'll go into the next slide. All right. So the five uh, elements of digital inclusion. Um, as a, uh, for those who may not be familiar, uh, we're lifting this content um, from the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, NDIA, of which ETN is an affiliate. Uh, and they have these really great resources uh, summarizing what digital inclusion, um, its core principles are about. Um, and it's just about what folks need to uh, be able to get online and to connect um, and use um, the, tool, the tools um, with their devices. Uh, so first, it's that broad uh, about broadband internet service having um, a connection um, to get online. Second is having uh, internet enabled devices so that they can take advantage of uh, home internet. Um, third is having access to digital literacy training so that they have the know-how and skills to use uh, their devices and digital tools. Uh, fourth is also having technical support so they may figure out any, uh, you know, issues um, in um, using um, their devices and using uh, their equipment. Uh, and last is also um, support for having content applications that are designed around um, ensuring folks may be independent um, and able to engage and collaborate um, digitally. Uh, so it's all about uh, making sure that uh, internet accessibility um, is uh, based and grounded on affordability, um, cultural responsiveness in our training and instruction. Um, and that those are also principles that are core to CTN's approach in delivering culturally responsive uh, instruction um, to our learners.
All right, we'll move on to the next slide. All right, uh, so the big uh, question in the room, uh, you know, what is the ACP? Um, sort of throwing out this term around, uh, just to be clear, it stands for the Affordable Connectivity Program. Uh, and I'll provide some background on um, what um, this entails. Uh, I'm sure many folks in the call are already familiar with this, uh, but it's for anyone who may not be um, as a refresher. So first, some history. It um, came as a result of the emergency broadband benefit um, that was passed during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and that provided $50 a month off of uh, internet bills. Um, it would be also 75 for tribal uh, for residents in tribal areas. Um, currently provides $30 off a month as a, a discount to the bill, um, 75 in tribal areas. Uh, and in certain rural areas in the future, it will also be up to 75. Um, it also provides a $100, $100 one-time uh, subsidy towards purchasing a device such as a laptop, uh, towards purchasing an uh, internet enabled a device, to be clear. Um, and the most important thing about, you know, what the ACP is, is that it's a very useful benefit that has helped close the affordability, affordability gap uh, for millions, uh, if not tens of millions of Americans uh, since it was conceived during the pandemic and afterwards. Uh, many folks receiving that $30 a month uh, may not be able to afford it uh, without uh, getting the monthly benefit. All right. So now, uh, how do you know? How do you folks enroll? Who's eligible? Um, let's see, Sky, may I ask you for some insight on these questions? Sure. Um, so, folks who are eligible or what qualifies a household um, as any individual within a household who is at the 200% 200 of the federal poverty guidelines uh, in income or they receive benefits from government assistance programs such as SNAP, WIC, Medicaid, uh, SSI support, um, they may be veterans, et cetera. Um, and another way that a family or a household can qualify is through a dependent benefit. Um, so there are a number of different uh, ways that households will qualify. We want to talk about what comprises a household as well. Uh, we know that there are households uh, that consist of, you know, roommate type situations where they pay separate bills, buy their own groceries, you know, and, and split the rent. Um, in that case, the um, if, if two separate people wanted to be approved under one roof for ACP, they would have to have separate internet accounts inside of that household um, to prove that that is, you know, not one household, but two. Um, but it can be done uh, just somewhat um, so a, a little bit trickier than, <laughs> than um, important to note that when applying, you need to make sure that the person who is on the application for ACP uh, is the same person who is enrolled in an internet benefit uh, with an ISP if they are already enrolled. If they are not enrolled, this, this will be the same person who does enroll to apply their benefit once they receive it. All right, thank you so much uh, for sharing that, Sky. Um, and now we uh, have our own testimonials and stories on ACP from our resident Sky Downing um, and Matthew Robinson. Let's see, is Matthew here with us on the call? He, he is not. <laughs> he, uh, for those of you who are local here in Austin, Mr. Robinson is being honored today uh, with uh, a Matthew Robinson Day. Uh, so he is down at City Hall accepting his award. October 5th, our day of equity is now Matthew Robinson Day in the city of Austin, Texas. Um, but for those of you who don't know, uh, Matthew Robinson is uh, a friend and a musical colleague of mine. He and I met through the blues music scene here in Austin, Texas. I am um, a non by day and a non at night, too, playing music on stages for all of you. Um, but, uh, uh, Matthew and I met uh, through the blues scene here and became fast friends uh, about nine 
nine years ago, uh, he fell on some difficult times and needed some assistance and a place to stay. And he has been living with me and my son ever since. So Matthew is 75 years old. He is one of Austin's legacy blues legends. Um, uh, he has toured the world playing blues music and still plays today. Uh, if you're in the Austin area, I strongly recommend you get out and see him. He puts on a really great show. Um, and hopefully he'll uh, be able to bop in here before the end of this session. But unfortunately, it seems his, uh, his Matthew Robinson Day crowning is taking a little longer than anticipated. So... Um, but uh, Matthew and I, our story is, our household is comprised of myself, uh, my 15-year-old son, and Matthew. I am- My name um, is Matthew Rock. Oh, <laughs> I am a, um, officially and legally uh, Matthew's formal caregiver. So I do have his medical and durable power of attorney. And like I said, he has lived with us for nine years now. Um, I pay all of the bills. I make sure that um, he is, you know, properly maintaining his insulin levels and taking care of himself. Uh, I cook his meals. I keep the food in the house that is healthy for all of us, so on and so forth. So that's the nature of our relationship. Um, Matthew has multiple uh, digital devices that you'll you'll hear us talk about in this video that we'll share a little later. Um, he has in-ear hearing aids. He has um, an in-arm uh, insulin monitor that helps us keep him protected as far as making sure he's, he's, his blood sugar is stable. Um, and then uh, with, you know, without those devices, like literally I sit in my office and I can hear his monitor go off and I know that I need to jump in there and make sure he's okay. So um, it's, it's been really invaluable. Uh, Matthew uh, through a partnership, when when pandemic hit, uh, I was able to enroll Matthew in a pilot tablet learning program that um, CTN My name is partnered. Matthew. <laughs> He's trying to talk. He's trying to talk. Uh, Let's uh, play the <laughs> video in a moment. <laughs> yeah. He's here, but not, right? Here, sure. uh, so Matthew participated in a pilot, um, our, our very first virtual um learning sessions for seniors. Uh, and this was a partnership between CTN and a local organization called um, Austin Freenet. And so he was able to get over 20 hours of tablet training in the virtual realm. Uh, we gave him a tablet with in a case and, um, and then gave him the training online during pandemic and got him up and accustomed to using this device. And this has literally changed his life. So he was a person that would tell you, um, um, that he was a dinosaur when it came to electronics and gadgets. Um, he couldn't text. He didn't have email. Uh, he didn't even bank at a banking institution. Um, he didn't trust them. So we now have him banking at a local credit union. He accesses his account every day online and looks at his balances. Um, he is uh, watching videos of his musical mentors on YouTube. He's watching his favorite Westerns and studying his Bible verses online, and he's able to communicate with the hordes of musicians and fans all across the world um, that he has uh, developed relationships with over the years. So it really has been life altering. Um, when pandemic hit, Matthew was somebody who was glued to the TV and got really scared, even though he lived in the in the protection of our home, he was, you know, locking his door and blocking it for fear that someone would, was going to break into our home and get into his room. And so there was a lot of um, fear and isolation that occurred during pandemic and, um, and getting him connected uh, through devices and getting him onto the internet and using the internet and these devices was just absolutely life changing for him. So um, here in this household, we use um, the internet for, I, I work remotely from home. 
My son is medically homebound and I homeschool him. Um, so he is virtually enrolled in school. Uh, we take care of Matthew with his digital devices. And then of course, all of our you know basic daily use of the internet and our devices for fun and entertainment. Uh, so we qualify for the ACP through my son's medical diagnosis. He is permanently disabled um, with mental health disorder and uh, is a permanent recipient of Medicaid. So we qualified under the dependent um, qualifier, and that is how our household receives the ACP. Now, Matthew can talk. <laughs> Thank, <video>. you so <laughs> Thank you so much, Guy. All right. Well, now, Tristan, to show uh, an amazing video featuring uh, Matthew and Sky's story. My name is Matthew Robinson. I was born and raised in Austin, Texas, I'm 75 years old, and I'm still playing the blues, and I love to kick the tree, as we call it. My name is Sky Downing. I am a single mother to my 15-year-old son, who has significant special needs, and caregiver to 75-year-old Matthew Robinson, who is one of Austin's last remaining legacy blues players. I am the sole provider for a three-person household. My household requires ACP in order to effectively function every day, and we're one of 20 million households in need of this benefit. The internet has helped me with almost every aspect of my life. That includes doctor visits, paying bills online, banking. There's so many things that I never thought of before. Now that I've ventured into this, it's just opened up a whole world of joy for me. We all deserve to have equal access to internet connectivity. Working for an organization with national reach, I am the director of all of our capacity building programs. So now I'm the one who's driving our ability to support our partner agencies in providing the work boots on the ground. If it wasn't for uh, Sky introducing me to this program, had not it been for that, I would still be a dinosaur. Because of the internet, I got great health, and especially at my age, I can be proud of that. <laughs> He has acquired digital devices um, such as an insulin monitor and his in-ear hearing aids. Those are all Bluetooth enabled. Without those devices and, and without him understanding how to use them properly, <laughs> you know, we'd be at a real loss. Thank you all so much for helping me. I encourage everyone to get on the internet. It is critical for all of us as practitioners, as well as the clients that we serve, that ACP is renewed. <laughs> Please don't take my ACP. Did we lose Unima? <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, um, there you are. <laughs> I was making sure that the captions are A-OK. -okay. It seems like it's all good. Um, so yeah, I really love that video. Um, thank you for playing that stuff. Um, I mean, it really captures just uh, how this is something that touches so many Americans um, and really enables connectivity. I think that's what it's all about. Um, so I believe we have, uh, let's see, wait, before this, um, I think Steph, try refreshing. Refreshing the entire presentation? Yes. 
Are you unable to see the presentation? See, there's a slide after this. Wait, the pause. After it was a YC, AC, yeah, rest. No, the one before this. Oh. For Luis. Yes. Wait, uh, pause, wait, go back. Oh, wait, pa wait um, stop screen sharing for a moment. Well, we can go ahead, go ahead and introduce Luis Mascarenas um, to speak, and then we can get caught up with the slides. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I believe Luis, are you here? Oh, Luis, you are on mute as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. I was on mute. <laughs> All right, hello, welcome. How would you like to introduce yourself, Luis? Sure. Um, my name is Luis Mascarenas, and uh, the first time I got the tablet, uh, people have little memories. And when I got this pen, uh, it was actually a Lenovo a laptop. It was an excellent thing that uh, taught me connection with a lot of people. I learned a lot of uh, uh, openings and I also got connected with my brother. We haven't spoken for so many years. Um, the, the laptop was great because I was to use the, um, uh, the digital, not a digital phone, but the flip phones. and. Uh, you know, this kind of connected and opened up a different world for me. Um, I, I got a lot of help from CDN, uh, especially with one-to-one -one coaching with Lauren. She kind of coached me up so good that uh, during pandemic, uh, I used my laptop to register people for, uh, for vaccines. And uh, it was a great thing, but, you know, people had an eye on my laptop. I mean, I was doing great thing for the community. Uh, they stole my laptop. Uh, uh, for my bag, but she tried to give me a, a tablet which wasn't functional as a laptop, but it worked great. And I really appreciate CTN doing all that help and educating people. And I'm there to vouch and help all the seniors to get connected with uh, um, with different community programs. And that has been great, a great asset to help us. Uh, he's been every thing a lot of people want to win. Uh, I, I, I hope they don't stop the ACP program. And it's very easy to um, to apply to. You know, if you have a program base, uh, different program to qualify, or you have an EPD card, it's kind of easier to do that. But also you can do it based on your income. If you can't, don't have enough income, you can, I had to do, I had to apply a couple of times. Um, I got disqualified and then, uh, I applied on my income and all that stuff. It, it takes a little while, but you know, there is help out there. So don't get disheartened. Try. Thank you so much, um, Luis. Um, I also want to ask some additional. Any, um, you're welcome. Wait. I also want to ask some additional questions, uh, and oh, I appreciate sorry? you discussing how. Um, sure. you know, it's not too hard to enroll in the program. How did you um, find support or navigate um, some challenges you might have faced when you were first applying for into the ACP? Um, actually, um, when they, when I was applying for the ACP program, I was already enrolled in an essential for Xfinity, and uh, me apply for ACP at the same time Obama for the assurance wireless and uh, they were kind of sending me but uh, for some reason I was not getting through uh, but when CTN had a meeting um, they were they kind of really pushed that thing up when, at the senior center the uh, Canon Kip and that's where I really went to it, it not only that they, uh, they had given good handouts with detailed information of how to enroll and what to do and, and if you have any help and they had special one-to-one, -one, you could do that. But I tried on my own and it wasn't that difficult when I got that, uh, the, the leaflet or the, uh, the, uh, the pamphlet and it was very easy. Call the number up and then you, know, you, you get an ACP identification and 
it tells you whether you're qualified and not. Uh, the other paperwork again and ask you for an email. Thank you. Um, Steph, did you have? Um... I just want to say it's a pleasure to have Luis participate in all of our programs. We've known Luis for roughly three years now. Luis has been in Home Connect. He's been in our digital equity program. He's been in our SF Digital Connections program. Luis is a dedicated learner who always strives to ensure that he is able to not only get on and connected, but also to help others as well. Um, when we, most of you don't know this, but Luis actually helped one of our digital coaches, his digital coach, in getting her COVID-19 vaccine back when those vaccines were just first coming out. Luis is a fantastic person, and we are extremely grateful to have you participate, and it's always a pleasure to be reconnected with you, Luis. Thank you. Yeah, um, I want to echo that. Thank you so much um, for coming on to share your story, Luis. Um, and I think it really emphasizes, you know, the community aspect of the community tech network um, and how we elevate and support um, folks uh, in connecting with these services and these programs uh, and making sure folks, you know, aren't left behind. Um, and that I think brings me to the next part of this presentation um, on, uh, you know, this sort of issue in the background of folks continuing to enroll, uh, you know, every month enrollments go up with ACP. Um, but in sort of in the backdrop of this is this sort of ticking time clock, uh, sort of that's what the hourglass is meant to capture here. Of next year in 2024, it's projected that you know the photo connectivity program is uh, expected to run out of funds. Uh, it had its you know sort of a set amount of uh, funding allocated to it um, in the federal legislation that um, funded this after the emergency broadband benefit uh, and. Around probably the third quarter um, or you know halfway through 2024, it's expected that um, those funds will be out, especially as more and more folks continue to enroll. So it's extremely good that we have folks signed up for the program, applying, enrolling, getting connected to it. They're in it actually giving them um, that discount so they can be um, get you know high speed access, get in and at, at home um, on their devices, um, but with uh, this sort of taking time clock, um, oh, speaking of clock, um, I think the time is out for Matthew not being here. He's here, so welcome. I just wanted to say welcome, Matthew. Scott, do you want to have any any words, any anything from Matthew? I also city council we made it Matthew Robinson day. I just came back from the city council. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It's amazing. Do you want to talk to Matthew for a minute about um, the internet and how it's benefited his life? Yes, I'd love to hear from you, Matthew. Well, uh, first of all, it's the best thing that has happened for me. Every aspect of my life has just been perfect with the internet. Before that, I could make a call on the smartphone or uh, receiving that was it i was a dinosaur but that acp helped me to communicate and i need to have that if i could get back on that program to help me because it's always something to learn and i i can really do it now because of that and i really put people my age especially who feel embarrassed to ask questions or they're ashamed to admit they don't know, I'm here to tell you, you should ask any question, no matter how silly. And all of you people that are involved in the, C, the ACP, don't mind if you have to tell me 20 times the same thing. <laughs> so that's how we learn and, and not to be shamed. And please ask about that ACP. Yeah, this is why advocating for the ACP's renewal is so important um, because it really does that that dis or that subsidy that um, greater access to the internet where it might not have been available before um, due to high cost or just access in general not 
not having the knowledge or the skills to access it uh, safely and effectively um, is just critical. It's critical to, oh, I'm blurring out on you, sorry. Uh, critical to reducing isolation and critical to connecting um, to healthcare services, uh, meals on wheels even, like, you know, everything is done online these days, so. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so thank you both, Matthew, Sky. I mean, you both captured, uh, you know, <laughs> more of what is at risk here. Um, as Matthew said, with the learning opportunities uh, from being connected and also having a device, and as Lou shared it himself as well, being able to um, get, you know, get those tools um, helps close that gap um, and helps reduce isolation for folks. Uh, helps open up different benefits economically, educationally, uh, health-wise as well. Um, I mean, the list of be connected is endless. Um, and that is something that we don't want to lose for so many families and households that are receiving this benefit. Um, so that's what you know is really at risk and what's at stake. Um, and uh, you know the other big factor here is Congress uh, needs to act on that. Um, you know, there's no getting around it. It's a federal program, um, and they need to uh, fund provide additional funds for it to be continued past its expected. Um, sort of end of fund date, so to speak. Uh, so that's what is at risk here um, and what we're talking about when we're discussing advocating um, for the ACP's renewal and continuing. Um, so how, you know, how can you help support ACP renewal? Um, I'm going to take some uh, resources from NDIA, um, from our partners at NDI. They have put out a really great toolkit, um, which I'll also drop in the chat. Um, and I'll go over a rundown of different activities they recommend and different ways that you can help uh, in whatever capacity to advocate for the ACP and to get in touch with your uh, elected officials, your representatives um, in Congress. Uh, so one being uh, writing a letter that explains uh, the value and the importance of the ACP. Uh, we, we all may live in different uh, congressional districts. Um, so. Uh, you can reach out to, and if you want any assistance in finding out exactly who to talk to, feel free to reach out to me. I'll drop my contact information in the chat. Um, but whoever your congressional representative is, uh, or your senator, uh, can draft a letter either by yourself uh, or in partnering with different organizations you may be a part of. Um, also joining any digital inclusion coalition, um, and as a coalition coming together uh, to discuss. Uh, why you're advocating for the ACP and why uh, you um, support your uh, official, your representative uh, voting or making a move to uh, continue funding it. Another avenue is to get in contact with your state broadband office. It will depend on the state, but um, whatever organization or department in California, uh, you may want to reach out to the California Department of Technology. Um, so reaching out to your state broadband office or Texas you know, the Texas Broadband Office. Um, I believe it's Greg Conti there, um, the director. So finding out who, um, what Broadband Office may be working on this and they may be able to also advocate um, or at least share that impact with them. Um, the governor's office is also another good avenue. Um, I believe in Arizona, they sent a letter to Governor Hobbs there. So. Uh, reaching out to um, your officials as well with signatures from um, different constituents and organizations uh, to send to their congressional delegation will also um, carry the sort of the weight of their office and making it clear that it's a unified effort and unified voice from their constituents that this is something that many folks want to see be continued. Um, next is requesting a meeting. Uh, you may be able to meet with your members of your congressional delegation. Uh, to share stories um, like those of Louise that we, we've heard today, like those of Matthews and Skies. Uh, sharing those stories makes it more clear to representatives uh, just what this program has done for folks and how much interest there is in seeing this be continued. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway that we can uh, share here today is that share, there's an immense value, there's incredible value in just sharing your story, sharing other stories, elevating those stories is what will really help drive um, the unified message that we all want the ACP to be continued. It has more of a benefit to folks uh, than the opposite. 
Uh, so sharing, continuing to share those stories and uplift uh, these narratives, uh, folks that, um, you know, who've received the ACP or that you've helped yourself apply and enroll in the ACP, that will also help uh, support ACP renewal. All right, so now I'll um, transition and head it off to Lauren to discuss uh, some communications around the ACP. Um, quick timer check, we're at about 15 minutes, just FYI. Uh, oh, thank you, Becca. All right, Lauren, are you with us? Oh, you're muted. Uh, sorry. There we go. Good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, our um, ACP resources, I use a lot from um, the NDIA, and I've got the link included in the in this um, presentation, which you will get a copy of. But I took two of the top areas that I think I use the most. So I use the ACP Consumer Outreach Tool from the federal government. I use some of their web resources. Um, I don't use their flyers because we created our own, um, but we do use some of their social media assets. And then you also have the opportunity for the Universal Service Administration Company's official ACP page. But what I love about it is it finds companies near me too that um, would find uh, internet service providers that participate in the ACP. And then the acceptable documentation guide I use um, as well uh, to make sure that we're up to date with what they'll accept. Next page. So some of the things that we do is we do social media on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, X now, um, Facebook, and Instagram. We write a blog um, occasionally, and we link to that in our social. Uh, we do an outreach to the press about some things that we're doing and why. And then we also do, um, we partner with another uh, non uh, nonprofit, um, say the Y, MCA, or Little Brothers, in an example in um, San Francisco, and also like with Goodwill in Texas. And we hold an event and we help promote that. So if it's for outside or just their constituent, if it's just for their constituents, we don't promote that. But what we do is produ produce a flyer that has where the event is, the location, what time, whether or not refreshments will be served. And then on the back, we have all the documentation that they need to bring with them. So if um, if it's income, if it's um, if if they're on the WIC program, if they're tribal, then some kind of documentation that the government will accept, and that makes it so much easier. So they're not having to leave and come back with documentation. So you want to make sure that they do have that documentation at the ACP sign up. So sometimes the state, had, and I don't know about your states, but California sometimes has money for print. And what they'll do is they'll send out a postcard for you with the zip codes around your event. So if you're like, if you're in the Tenderloin, they'll send out um, postcards for that area. Um, also, we sometimes promote on the website and now we're uh, creating an events calendar. So when we're having more ACP events, they'll be able to show up on that as well. We use an email, our email list. <clears throat> so we also do a newsletter. So if we're doing some kind of a large event, then we will use our email list, but we include it in our newsletter. So those are some of the things that we do. Um, and happy to hear about if anybody does something different or needs more information, I'm happy to help. I do see a question in the chat from Sylvia um, regarding um, uh, being in an area where service providers aren't enrolled or participating in the ACP and, and how um, we can move the needle on that. And I wanted to address that for you, Sylvia. So the FCC is ready and waiting for your call. <laughs> um, let them know they, they just ask that we inform them, um, those of us that are boots on the ground that, um, that have this information, that we inform them that this is going on. And if you know who your local ISPs are and they're just not participating in the program, the FCC will reach out to them 
them and encourage that participation. Um, so we just need to go through the um, FCC uh, um, help desk. Uh, and that's where, you know, it's also a customer complaints, but um, you can raise it up to them and they will actually do the heavy lifting of following up with those ISPs and encouraging their participation. Um, and can I also say that as um, Unimo was talking about advocacy, there's also in the um, NDIA toolkit, there are um, form letters that you can adopt for yourself and edit and use to send to your congressional members, um, governor, and um, Congress. So, you know, feel free to use their their pre pre made um, text. Yeah, definitely take advantage of what's already been uh, drafted. Yeah, and we do want to mention um, because there are very distinct rules about advocacy work inside of nonprofit and, and maintaining nonprofit status. So we do want to mention that the kind of advocacy that we are talking about is not, you know, this is not a paid position. Um, this is not something where you would uh, tell all of your staff that they must, you know, use work hours to do this work. Um, and that is what, you know, makes it okay. This is, this is simply, um, you know, personally advocating for the benefit to be renewed. And so, um, and Unama, I know you can speak to this a bit better than me because you are the, the subject matter expert on that end of things. But just from a nonprofit leadership perspective, this was something that we looked at and, you know, take very seriously because obviously none of us want to compromise um, our nonprofit standing by doing something that we're not supposed to be doing. Um, so uh, there is there are very distinct rules around this and, um, and this type of activity, writing letters, um, encouraging uh, clients and partners to do the same, um, it falls under that, that safe, it falls into that safe zone of activity. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Sky, for um, providing that clarity as well. Yeah. So we do have about 10 minutes um, left and definitely want to leave room for questions. So Unama, I'll let you take the lead on that. While um, we are tending to your questions and Unama is wrapping up, I will be managing the drawing. We have a really large group here. So I have been doing three drawings in previous sessions. I'm gonna draw five names today uh, because I think, what the heck, let's go ahead and sponsor a full cohort of ACP enrollments specialists so, awesome. so we'll uh, pick up, uh, the <laughs> raffle now that we're at the end but also uh answer questions uh so starting with patty has her hand or your hand up yeah hi how are you hello um, thanks so much for doing this so i am a um social work case manager and i work for um youth and young adults in rural indiana um i'm also in a master's of social work program um and i actually have a few questions if that's okay Mm -hmm. um, so my first question is, you know, I have had a couple of clients sign up for the ACP and like Louise said, it's super easy to qualify. I mean, literally like even when they were like, we need additional documentation, we would send that in within like 15 minutes. They're like, you qualify. It's awesome. But it's really hard to translate that to getting um, to ISPs. Um, it's like there's a million hoops you have to jump through to get that to your ISP. Um, is there a process that you guys are working on to streamline that? See, or is it, might it just be, different from ISP to ISP? It might be a lift question potentially. Um, but uh, it's out of, it's out of um, I'll let Sky add on anything from Lyft side, but um, I know Education Super Highway has done some work around streamlining the process um, in terms of applying um, at getacp.org. Um, from our side, I don't know if we have a tool uh, around streamlining. Um, you know, folks may apply, and then um, when it comes to actually enrolling and receiving it, uh, you know, talking with the I, I, the identify themselves um, is um, is also what you know is sort of closes that last that last step. Um, if folks, if you find that um, you're helping to enroll folks and they're not the identify themselves is not being responsive. Uh, putting in, uh, getting in touch with the FCC um, so that they're aware of that issue can help resolve that. Um, I think someone dropped, I think that 
their contact in the chat. Um, but yeah, getting in touch with the FCC list so that they're aware. Um, I think we'll also um, sort of urge the ISP to make sure that they're also following through on their own promise to deliver the ACP. Awesome, thank you. Um, oh, I, have I, just wanted to, I just wanted to say, Steph, do you have anything to contribute to that? You work with so many of the ACP events. Yeah, just whenever you're helping a person apply to ACP, it's best to ensure or make sure that they understand which supporting documentation they should bring with them or they should have on hand um, to make the application process um, more easy or I would say easier to complete in a timely fashion. Um, there are, I would say that the quickest turnaround time for an application that I've noticed will be about two days. Um, but sometimes, depending on which piece of documentation is provided, it can take several days, up to like a week or two. Um, so what we have noticed is if you're supporting someone and applying to the benefit, to you can also upload, uh, you can have, um, because they bring multiple forms of documentation, and the more documentation uh, that you bring and upload to your, uh, with your application, uh, you'll then possibly have a quicker turnaround time to learn if you're uh, accepted or ineligible. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to add to that actually, Steph. So very important to understand that the application must be complete when it's turned in. If it is not complete, it is not counted. Um, so there isn't an opportunity where the FCC reaches out to your client and says, hey, you're missing this document. It's just dropped and you have to start over. Um, so we definitely suggest pre-screening, pre-qualifying mm -hmm. your clients, and then when they come in for help, you've kind of you've already prepared them for the process, um, and just really making sure that they do qualify in advance. Uh, for those that have a government, you know, like in our case with the dependent benefit. Um, that is already in that you know big system out there in the in the uh, internet airwaves, right? So as soon as um, mine and my son's social security numbers are shared out. Uh, that connects to that system and we received instant approval. Um, so we had our approval right then and there. I then turned around to my ISP and um, signed up, you know, had them apply the benefit and that occurred within 24 hours. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it can be very straightforward and other times it's not. Um, the biggest thing that I can say is that the, the more that you key into the preparedness, like being prepared and pre-qualifying your clients and making sure that they have everything they need, the better off they're going to be. Um, and then the, the other big thing to notice, just that, you know, so the names need to be the same across the, the service, you know, the internet service provider, um, the person who's applying for the benefit has to be the person who is on the bill for, with the ISB. Um, and then you want to make sure too with like multiple family names um, that that can get very tricky. I think the FCC has fixed this in the application, but uh, the initial application when it came out, there was not space to put multiple family names. It was um, really unbelievable, <laughs> like a huge oversight on their part. So um, I believe they fixed that. But again, you just want to make sure that that name matches the name that's on the bill for the internet and, and so on and so and matches the name of the person receiving the benefit that qualifies them. So everything has to agree mm. across thank, the board. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you, Steph, as well. I know uh, Tracy has your, uh, their hand up. I um, also want to make time for uh, the raffle because uh, we're hitting <laughs> about three minutes before we wrap up. So we'll take a quick question from Tracy and then uh, do the final ra raffle to, uh, to close out. Okay, I just I just have a comment. I, uh, I helped a resident at one of our properties. I work for the Housing Authority of the City of Austin and at Lakeside, one of our properties, I helped a resident um, who already had an ISP with um, they had their account through Spectrum. And I assisted the resident in signing up for ACP by calling Spectrum. And Spectrum was able to do it over the phone. And they said, okay, you're qualified, you're enrolled, you're good to go. So I don't know what happened after that. Like I'm assuming everything went well, but it was a very 
easy process for the uh, spectrum staff. So if somebody already has an ISP, um, it might be best to call the ISP. I don't know if anybody has any other experiences to share. Well, but. and that's what my question was about. I'm so glad you shared that because I was getting a little uh, disheartened because Verizon made it incredibly cumbersome to apply that. And I don't know why Verizon threw up all these walls, but that was my experience. So I'm glad to hear other ISPs are not like that. And if you're running into that, Patty, please report that to the FCC. Yeah, yeah, that's, yep. definitely that's wrong. the only yeah, way we're going to get it fixed is is to let them know that it's happening. Okay, yeah, I, I, make I, complaints, you. give feedback. Yep. Um, so thank you both for that. Um, now we'll turn our attention to the raffle calling and see the lucky five folks who've won. Yeah, this is very exciting. So we use a um, an iOS application called Raffle Pro, and um, I put all of your names uh, from the participant list into uh, this handy dandy little app, and then it just randomly chooses. So uh, we have five lucky winners, starting with Sylvia Brown. Sylvia Brown, <laughs> um, and then Joshua Williams. Uh, Rick, Ricardo Castaneda <laughs> and Sandy Jones. Sandy Jones. And then we have somebody who has called in from a 415 number. Is that one of our team members or is there somebody else? If somebody's dialed in on a 415 interchange, you are a winner too, but I need to know who you are. <laughs> Okay, so if I don't hear from that person, then I will go ahead and draw another name. Give me one moment. Hi, right, here we go. So the fifth and final winner is Ellen Kamai. I'm not sure if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, uh, but we will, through your registrations, we will reach out to you. Uh, what you are being awarded is one enrollment into our Lyft ACP training product. So this is a train the trainer product for ACP enrollment specialists. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We do have to hop onto our next call for the day. We wanna wish you all a very happy Digital Inclusion Week and um, happy day of equity as well. <laughs> thank you for awesome. joining us. Yeah, thank you all so much for joining us again. Happy Digital Inclusion Week and take care y'all. Thank you.